Welcome everyone. Today we'll be going through a few of the different ways to better organize your monitor page within Thinkorswim. These little adjustments that we're going to make are going to make it so much easier for you guys to manage all of your open positions and just keep track of everything that's going on, especially as the size of your portfolio starts to grow. Coming over here and taking a look at my current monitor page, you can see it's just the default layout. It's simply displaying all of my current and open positions in alphabetical order with the same default columns of info that you guys would normally see when you first open up a brand new Thinkorswim account. So for me, the very first thing I want to do to organize this page a little bit better is by creating a few different groups to put all of my like kind positions together. So that would mean clustering all of my futures positions together, all of my stock positions together, and all of my options positions together. That way they're not all mixed together, making it more difficult for me to manage each individual position and the group as a whole. Now, in order to actually create the groups in Thinkorswim, it's actually pretty simple. We simply need to right click on the position we wanna create a group for and then click on move to group. So in my case, let me go ahead and start with the future symbol since it's the very first one up here at the top. What I'm gonna do is actually go ahead and start by right clicking on it. For those of you using a laptop or a Mac computer, you'll either need to use two fingers at the same time or hold down command and use two fingers and that should count as a right click. But once we actually do that, we'll open up a little pop-up window down below and all we need to do is find and click on the one marked move to group. That'll then open up another little pop-up window to the right showing us all of the groups we've already created. And in my case, I actually haven't created any in this account. So what I'm gonna instead do is go ahead and click on add a group to create a brand new one. That'll then open up a little pop-up window where we could then name the group. And in my case, I'm gonna name this the futures group and go ahead and hit okay. You'll then notice that as soon as I clicked on okay, the future symbol of ES actually disappeared from the unallocated group and now appears in that brand new futures group. So now if I wanted to do the exact same thing for my stock positions, I'm gonna come down here and right click on one of the symbols, in this case, American Airlines. I'm then gonna come down to move to group and select add a group. We'll go ahead and come over here and name this one the stock group. We'll go ahead and keep it simple. So I'm just stock and again, go ahead and hit okay. Just like before, you can see American Airlines disappears from the unallocated group and now appears in the brand new stock group. Let me go ahead and move all of the other stock positions over to the same group. So right here, I'm moving over Amazon. Let's next move over Facebook. And then finally, we'll move over SoFi. So now you can see here it's broken up into three separate groups. I've got the futures group, I've got the stock group, and I've got the unallocated group. Now you guys could create a completely separate group for options as well, but I prefer to leave them in the unallocated group since options are what I trade most actively. That's because anytime I open up a brand new position, it's going to go to the unallocated group by default. And since I trade options most actively, that makes the most sense for me. Now, if I do end up opening up a stock position or futures position, it will go to that group as well. And then I'll have to manually move it to the correct group. But since I don't trade them as actively, it just makes more sense for me to have it set up this way. I also like it this way since it makes it so much more obvious to me whenever one of my stocks or ETFs gets paid a dividend. That's simply because my account is set up to reinvest all the dividends in my account. So anytime I repurchase shares, whether it be from a dividend or just me going out and buying shares, it's gonna automatically appear in the unallocated group. That just makes it super obvious to me. So for example, if I were to get paid a dividend on my Facebook position, and let's say I end up buying 0.2 additional shares of it, it would appear right here in unallocated, and then I would have to manually move it to the stock group. That way I just have a better idea of what's going on in my account when I'm getting paid dividends. And like I said, this is just the way I like to manage it. You guys can set it up whatever way makes the most sense for you. Now, besides the groups themselves, I also like to create a set of custom columns for each one that makes the most sense for each individual group. So in the case for stocks, for me, I actually like to see a breakdown of how that stock is doing over the past year, over the past month, and over the past week. But I wouldn't necessarily want that for my options positions. For those of you not entirely aware of how to change these column headers up here at the top, the way that you're gonna do that is by using the little gear icon over here on the right hand side. Clicking on that gear is actually gonna open up a customization window where you can see all of the columns that you could add to your monitor page over here on the left, and then all of the columns you're already using over here on the right. So for me, I think I told you guys that I wanted to see the percent change week, month, and year to date for my individual stocks. So I can see those right here. Let me go ahead and add them. Adding each individual one just by double clicking on it. So now looking here in the stock group, you'll see that I've got quantity, 
days trade price mark, mark change, and then the percent change. And actually, let me get rid of days as well, since that doesn't make sense for stock. Now that I'm happy with these new comms that we just added and the ones that we got rid of, let me come down here and hit OK. And now you can see those brand new comms that we just added to our stock group. So in the case of American Airlines, I can see it's up 5.7% this week. It looks like it's up 16% for the month, but still down 17% for the year. Now in the case of the options group, I like to have a different set of information there. So let me come over here to the gear icon. And let me come over here and I'm gonna first begin by adding the Greeks. So in this case, I'm gonna add Delta. I'm gonna add Theta. And I also like to see P and L percent. So I'm gonna come up here and type in P slash L percent and add it to the right as well. Now I'm gonna come down here and select OK. And we can see the brand new comms that I just added to the options group. And those are completely different than those in the stock group. Now, finally, the very last setting that I want to adjust in here is actually specifically for the options contracts. Before we actually adjust the setting, let me come down here to one of these options positions and show you why I'm going to change it. So looking here at the PayPal position, you can actually see this is a vertical put spread. I sold the $75 put and I bought the $70 put. Now, at the moment, this doesn't actually make it clear that this is a vertical spread. It doesn't tell me that anywhere. And if I look over here to the right, it doesn't do any of the math for me. If I were to look at this, it looks like I sold this $75 put for $315. I bought this one for $0.80. Cents. And if I wanted to know the exact credit that I received for doing this, I would have to do the math myself. I would have to take $315, the credit, minus the $0.80 cent debit I paid to come out to a total of $2.35 in credit that I received for doing this vertical put spread. For me, that's just too much of a pain. I don't want to have to do the math every time I put on a spread. I would rather it just do the math for me automatically. So what I'm gonna do is actually make a slight adjustment for the positions page by coming up here to the setup menu in the upper right hand corner. I'm then gonna come down and select application settings. That'll then open up the settings window, which we can then find the position section over here on the left hand side. Then come over here where it says group positions by instrument, go ahead and select that. Then we're gonna go ahead and flip it over to order. So now instead of just grouping them by the instrument or the symbol, it's now going to group each individual trade by the order. Now that I'm happy with that, I'm just going to come down here and select apply settings. And if I were to come up here and use, let's say Google as the example, you can now see down here that instead of it just listing out the options individually, it actually tells me that I put this on as a vertical put spread. Looking over to the right, it also tells me how much I received in total for doing this. So it does the math for me. Right here it says I received a total of $790, and that's accounting for the fact that I sold this one for $103.20, and I paid $95.30. I can also quickly see that it's currently trading for $1280, which is why I'm down $490 on the spread overall since I put it on. But I think you guys get the general idea of how you guys can now organize this monitor page to make it way easier to track and monitor all of your open positions. Really have an idea of what's going on in your account right now. Now you guys did see how I like to customize my own monitor page. I like to create groups for futures, for stock and options, and then I like to create their own column headers with information I think is actually useful for each individual group. Now of course you guys can customize this however you want. Some people like to have groups for each individual type of trade, like groups for iron condors and groups for verticals but it's totally up to you. Go ahead and play around with it a little bit, set it up the way you like it, and then if you guys have any questions for me, please leave them down below. But I think we'll go ahead and wrap it up here. I covered just about everything you guys need to know to organize these pages for yourself. I hope you guys all have an amazing rest of your week, and I'll catch you on the next video.